Good evening. Welcome to Left, Right and Centre. I'm Vishnu Shom. It's a sad day for so many families across the country as they come to terms with the fact that their near and dear ones in the CRPF, the brave soldiers who were killed in the line of duty, will never be coming back. Instead, they came back in caskets. These caskets went across the country to small villages all over India, the homes where these brave soldiers had come from. Wives today will recognize that they no longer have their husbands. Children recognize that they will not have their fathers. And the sense of grief and the sense of the memories that they have today would be overpowering, not just for the families, but for lakhs of Indians across India. Today, we pay homage to these brave soldiers of the CRPF who lost their lives. We look back at their lives through the words of their families and the near and dear ones. But also, as we do this, we bring you the sad news that yet another young soldier, this time a major of the Indian Army, was killed in the Rajori sector near the line of control between India and Pakistan as he tried to defuse an improvised explosive device. This is a constant threat that India faces, our soldiers face. This young major was supposed to get married only next month. We'll talk about the constant threats and the constant challenges that our soldiers face in Jammu and Kashmir. We look at the larger situation now, whether a military option against Pakistan is almost inevitable. And we also discuss the threat of terror. But first, a look back from across the country at these caskets going home for the very last time. Twelve soldiers from Uttar Pradesh died in the Kashmir attack. Across UP, massive crowds gathered at their homes and led processions for last rites. In Unnao, 35-year-old Ajit Kumar Azad left behind two young daughters and an unfulfilled promise to take his family on a vacation to Kashmir, a promise he had made just a week ago before returning from leave. The 12-kilometer-long journey of Ajit Kumar Azad, one of the soldiers killed in Unnao, has just about ended here. Important thing to reflect right now are these huge crowds uh, that have come in here to bid farewell to Ajit Kumar Azad. Sanjay Sinha had recently been transferred to Nagaland and before leaving, he told his family that this was his last journey to Jammu on his way to Nagaland and he promised that he would take a break to find a suitable boy for his daughter. Entire villages came out to pay their last respects to Rohitash Lamba as his mortal remains made their way by road to his village close to Jaipur. <laughs> Rohitash had come home only last month to see his newborn son for the first time and little did he know that this would also be his last visit. Heartbroken, his friends remember him as a man who motivated others to join the army. A huge outpouring of grief as entire villages have turned up here to pay homage to those who died in the terror attack in Jammu and Kashmir. Like 25-year-old Rohitash Lamba, who came here just a month ago to see for the first time his little newborn baby boy. Jeetrat Gujar from Bharatpur, who motivated other youngsters in the village and told them that the army and the armed forces are a good career option. And people like Hemraj Meena from Kota, who had just a few years left before he retired. Their stories will now remain unfinished and untold. Jawan Bablu Santra of the 35th Battalion is survived by his wife, four-year-old daughter and mother. Bablu called his mother to inquire about her well-being before leaving in the convoy from Jammu. The 38-year-old was supposed to take voluntary retirement next year after completing 20 years of service in the force. 
Bhavni Shatra's wife feels war is not the answer. There will be a loss. Mothers will lose their sons on both sides of the border. But there are many who feel this time round there is no other option. The remains of Mata Shivachandran were laid to rest with state honours at his hometown Kargudi in Tamar Nadu's Aryalur district. Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman paid her respects. The martyr leaves behind a pregnant woman and a two-year-old son who wore a military attire that his dad gifted. Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman was here to pay her last respects. In fact, he leaves behind a pregnant wife, a two-year-old son who is wearing a military attire his father had gifted, not knowing that he would never see him again. Thousands paying their last respects to Vasant Kumar Vivi, a 35-year-old CRPF martyr who since his childhood had only one dream, to join the forces and don the uniform, the first in his family. As his colleagues in uniform give him the guard of honour, his wife and mother are inconsolable but away from the media glare. Few hours before Vasant Kumar Vivi's body was brought to his home, his daughter, eight-year-old, smiled at me, shook my hands, little aware of her deep loss. A loss so deep and personal, not just for the grieving families, but for every Indian. Bureau Report, NDTV. An incredible, incredible loss for all of those families. If you would like to donate for the welfare of these families, do be a part of a home ministry scheme. It's called Bharat Ke Veer. Uh, and we've got the details there on the screen for you. You can donate uh, to the families, to the loved ones of these brave soldiers who've lost their lives fighting for us and all that we believe in. The details there on your screen. I spoke to the Director General of the Central Reserve Police Force, the man who heads this huge police force, one of the largest anywhere in the world. Not very many speak about the CRPF all that often. It's usually the, it's usually the armed forces that people refer to. But across India, the CRPF plays a very critical role. They are deployed not just in Jammu and Kashmir, they are also deployed in the worst of areas hit by Maoist terror. Uh, the Director General of the CRPF spoke to me. He told me about the loss that he suffers, particularly as the head of what he says is an extended family. It's been one of the most difficult times for the CRPF, a force which has defined itself as being one of the sturdiest, one of the most committed security forces in the country. The loss of so many men in that horrific IED blast uh, is something which all of us across the country feel very, very deeply about. Joining us now uh, is the Director General of the CRPF, Mr. Bhatnagar. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Sir, before we talk about the blast or anything else, the men and their families, this must be primary on your thoughts. Uh, wh what is your message to, to, to the men and women in uniform in the CRPF? I salute my brave soldiers who have made the supreme sacrifice in the highest traditions of the forts and uh, I express my heartfelt condolences to their families. They are a part of our family and they will always remain a part of our families and we are one with them in their hour of grief. See this force has got a tradition of valor and sacrifice and here we believe that every personal is as important as any other. We operate on the field, we have operational duties, and we take on the most difficult challenges as a team. So we work as a very close-knit family because in operational matters, it is the teamwork and the confidence and the camaraderie that matters. The jesh e Mohammed, uh, as a group, the, the armed forces, the security forces that had huge successes, particularly in, in a little bit more than the last one year, what does this indicate? Is this um, a revived jesh e Mohammed, or was this a, a lone ranger without very much support? See, the Tanzims have 
a foreign terrorist component which infiltrates across the border and there is a local element in the Tanzims. And jaish e Muhammad, we have had very notable successes in the last one year. So today, definitely it is an act of desperation. Um, and sir, um, in terms of this act of desperation, the ability to get explosives of this quantity, I mean, we are, we are told 60, 70 kilos uh, in one place, uh, how could that have happened at all? See, it is a matter of investigation and uh, the agencies are here and the forensic teams and the blast investigation teams are here, both from the NSG and also from the CFSL. Hmm. And uh, all the agencies are working on this aspect. Well, without any doubt, a horrific act of desperation. But what's the road ahead now? Uh, where does India go from here onwards? Joining us now, uh, Lieutenant General uh, Atta Hasnain. He is the former Corps Commander uh, of the 15th Corps, where I am here in Srinagar. Uh, Pavan Khera of the Congress, Mr. K. Srinivasan, the former Inspector General of the BSF, also uh, of the CRPF, and Ashok Thakur, uh, the BJP leader. Uh, General Hasnain, let me come to you first. You know, it, it seems almost inevitable that India is going to respond militarily in, one, in, in some way, shape or form. No one knows where, no one knows where. But the concern is uh, of escalation, uh, that we've had surgical strikes in the past which have been limited in their scope, but uh, uh, isn't the primary concern of our military planners that, look, maybe we cannot limit it this time around, and that represents an altogether different threat? Yes, Vishnu. Uh, thank you for that question. And let me start by also expressing my deep anguish and condolences and grief for uh, the families of all the martyrs uh, who, who, who gave up everything in this terrible tragedy which took place at Pulwama. But coming to your question specifically, yes, the surgical strikes of uh, 2016 uh, were at a lower end of the uh, spectrum of uh, options that we had. And they went surgically for only the terrorist bases. We did not impuse, impose any punitive uh, action against the Pakistan army itself. And that is why the deniability of this entire operation was very high as far as Pakistan was concerned. But this time, I think the sentiment yes. uh, has built up to a very large extent. The prime minister in the last 24 hours has made three references uh, and promises to the nation that this uh, act will be avenged, a retribution will be there, and the fact that the political climate of India at the moment with the elections coming obviously points to the direction that something is definitely going to happen. But before giving you a military option, let me only spell out very briefly that the most important thing at the moment is to have a political consensus, also to ensure, I hope that political consensus can last, it is very visible in Delhi, I hope it will also be there in Kashmir, yes. I also hope that the vilification the, against the common Kashmiri will stop so that we have a very large firm base. But General, could you answer the question the specifically? We've got limited time. Can you tell me the, the, the military operations and the need okay, to, uh, you know. to keep them at a level see, which from, works from for the, India? How, how is that challenging? You have a spectrum of uh, options available from air strikes. This is not a black and white thing which you can do. Black, air strikes, I'm sure the Air Force is looking at the potential targets. They need not be military targets in a case like this. They have to be terrorist bases, and it's obvious that the base at Bahawalpur from where Jaish e Mohammed is operating, the Murid K base, these are the kind of objectives that we should be looking at. It will obviously invite a response for which India should okay. be prepared, and this is, the response may go into the realm right. of an all out war for which India should be prepared itself also. Besides that, you have got surgical options okay, inside I, Jammu and Kashmir, across the line of control, yes. both in the valley yes. and in the Rajouri sector, where specific objectives, which are uh, dominating and assisting in the infiltration of terrorists across the line of control, almost on the basis on which we planned in 2001, but we did not execute. That kind of an okay, general, also general, exists. general. I, I, I understand I what you're saying that there are lots of options which are, which are available, which we need to look at 
from a smaller uh, from a smaller definition of a military strike to all out war india needs to be prepared but you raised an important point about political consensus pawan khera let me come to you next um, at one level in delhi we've seen a very solemn mood where all parties have come together there's been an all party meeting today uh, and there's been a sense that uh, of of shared grief obviously uh, do you believe that this is something that this is going to continue or do you believe that this is going to become a political issue ahead of the elections elections notwithstanding as an opposition yes we have a, it's our duty to raise issues uh, politically and raise the angst and anguish of every single indian at the political level having said that this is not the moment for that this is not the moment to analyze who went wrong where and what are the lists of failures of of this government right. this is not the moment for that at all right now the government needs our support the government needs everybody's support and therefore we are standing with the government in whatever decision the government deems fit to i won't use the strong word of avenge but to give a befitting response and to at least uh, you know try and ally people's anguish and, and uh, sorrow and anger uh mr thakur it's very important that uh, in this election campaign that this entire issue of what has happened in kashmir that the horrific losses which have suffered are not used as a political instrument to get political points is there an assurance from the bjp that that will not happen that all that you will do is look at this from a absolutely basic a uh, military standpoint diplomatic standpoint going forward that this is not an election issue i think this is the time to stand with the forces uh, government is already taking consensus with all the political parties and all the political parties had shown consensus on this issue i think uh, there are we must uh, open uh, keep open all the sabhi options jo hai we must open them uh, keep open it may be a diplomatic it may be a military action it may be a uh, any other sanction uh, i think economic sanction and uh, uh, government has started taking action uh, today uh, uh, most favor nation status is withdrawn uh, duty on uh, pakistan goods is increased to 200% to, uh, side by side uh, yes if it is a military Uh, i think they uh, forces must be given free hand and uh, government has already given free hand to them uh, they they should think and they should take action as okay. per their choice that's i think that's all right i want to go across to mr srinivasan mr srinivasan um you know the 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 objective of the surgical strikes was to ensure that pakistan thought 100 times before continuing to encourage terror in jammu and kashmir to that end it's not worked because terrorism has gone nowhere we've seen these attacks yes there have been successes uh, within jammu and kashmir in taking out uh, the leadership of say the jaish e mohammed but the fact is it's still alive what guarantee is there that a, a, a stronger military response is going to dissuade pakistan from from funding fueling and assisting terror in jammu and kashmir uh, we must notice that uh, this incident such car bomb attack happened in uh, 2003 on radio kashmir but what is peculiar today is it is a car bomb attack on a mobile target earlier it used to be a campus or a gate and most of the time it was unsuccessful now the jaish mohammed was active right from 2000 uh, right on 1999 and 2003 we have almost eliminated him the leadership of the jaish was really in a bankruptcy by 2003 after the elimination of gazi baba now after 15 years we are seeing the again head of the jaish here now and that too with a very big bang they came in the south kashmir again south kashmir one should not forget it is the birthplace for all the militancy now with the emergence of this after 1990 and with a great lull here the hm has taken the vacuum now the jaish is coming to fore and jaish is always the baby of pakistan now we cannot uh, let down our security here now this is what has happened in between is actually we wait for the healing touch process it is good but on the same time we were not very harsh towards the militants 
we were more reactive we were not proactive yes. probably that has given elbow space for the jesh militant also so this is a time now when you are talking about surgical strike i have a two concept of surgical strike one is you go against pakistan but within the kashmir we need to have a surgical strike what we call it in our security terms a caso and the cat operations that needs to be again uh, revisited yes. we are really not concentrated on them that's a fair point sir and i take it completely general hasnain uh, i want you to reflect briefly sir on a very sad situation uh, reports that we are getting from some parts of the country that kashmiri kids kashmiri students are being targeted they are being thrown out of their homes wherever they've come to study uh, with that there is video for in in some parts of a sarpanch i believe in the punjab saying that throw them out they should not stay over here in a time like this when we need to stand rock solid as indians is the real danger that we continue or some people continue to alienate innocent people who've done nothing absolutely vishnu i i entirely endorse what you have said but i i let me argue from the point that political consensus does not mean coming together in delhi it is more important that political consensus sends out the correct messaging to the rest of india what has happened in dehradun and what has happened in other parts of the country with the threats to the kashmiri students isn't going to strengthen our cause in any way is going to weaken our cause is going to create more recruitment potential for the jaish e mohammed than such organizations and this is what i was talking about political consensus and i'm not very hopeful that beyond 3 or 4 days we are going to see the parties come together in this manner we are all aware that the elections are on us and uh, it's a matter of time before you start the finger pointing all over again right uh, mr khera uh, just from a, a, a congress standpoint um, i understand what you say when you say that your party will will stand by the by the government and hope that the government takes the right decision to give a befitting reply does the congress party endorse military action against pakistan at this stage we so this is i don't think such questions need to be discussed and answered in the studio debate these are questions which are discussed at an appropriate level and i'm sure they must have been discussed at the all party meeting or wherever they need to be discussed having said that as i said the nation is it's an angry nation today there is also sorrow there and this is an unprecedented attack on our forces and it's an attack on each one of us so the government i'm sure has wise counsel around it to give it appropriate advice on what is the appropriate action that opposition stands committed to stand by the government in any such decision uh mr thakur one last uh, word to you sir on the one hand we've got an excellent equation with the united states where the us has said that india has its right has our right to defend ourselves but on the other hand you've got uh, pakistan's all weather ally china who's not even willing uh, to endorse molana masood azhar as a global terrorist um we face that challenge as well a lot of people would say that most favored nation status to pakistan being removed is not very much uh what are some of the other significant steps that india can do to alienate pakistan diplomatically um uh, you know going beyond military options to actually make its point because we've tried everything in the past and it's not worked i think pakistan became a nonsense in the in this region and iran itself is suffering afghanistan itself is suffering from pakistan ter terrorism and side side bangladesh is also suffering from the terrorism uh, i think all the these states can uh, come together and diplomatically we, we must talk uh, and international community also should come uh, together and now this is time to isolate pakistan Uh, i think lot uh, in the past a lot is done a lot of uh, uh, efforts are done to uh, do this but uh, we must go ahead and uh, the, some more things to be done side by side uh, economic sanctions uh, we started to All 100% right. duty uh, on pakistan goods and it will uh, i think uh, uh, the economic crisis in the pakistan is already going on and this sanction will do lot uh, and uh, make pressure on pakistan 
Well, let's see what happens. India has made it absolutely clear that Pakistan needs to take, uh, you know, something which is actionable against, uh, needs to take proper steps against terrorist groups. This needs to be demonstrated. This needs to be result-oriented. Uh, we've made these statements in the past. Nothing has actually changed. There is a sentiment in the country, uh, and it appears we are headed as, in a certain direction. And I think that direction uh, is certainly something that uh, should possibly frighten all of us. But perhaps we are at a stage now uh, when there are no options. Gentlemen, I'd like to thank all of you very much for joining us. And I'd like to end this program by once again reminding our viewers of the huge loss that the CRPF and the country has suffered. Let us once again just remember those families and, and, and think about the losses that they've suffered. We're out of time. Thank you very much for being with us.